history paper 4 this is specimen paper uh, which will be applicable for examination from 2023 so let's start with question number 1 element x can undergo the following physical changes okay there are some physical changes shown in the figure look at the question name each of the numbered physical changes shown in fig okay number one it is converting solid to liquid so that is melting uh, two is conversion of gas to liquid you know this is condensation condensation and three is liquid to solid that is freezing and fourth one is liquid to gas you can say this is boiling or evaporation that is also conversion of liquid to gas next part one difference between boiling and evaporation is the rate at which the processes occur state one other difference between boiling and evaporation we studied that in chapter one states of matter so boiling takes place over entire liquid or you can write evaporation is a surface process and boiling takes place at constant temperature or you can say evaporation uh, takes place over the range of temperature so you can state any of the differences that we studied in uh, while we were completing the syllabus describe the separation arrangement and motion of particles of element x in solid state so again this is from states of matter in solid state particles are touching each other there is no separation among the particles and as far as arrangement is uh, considered arrangement is regular particles are regularly arranged and what about motion uh, you know in solids particles vibrate only particles vibrate only there is no other kind of motion in case of solids because particles are tightly packed element x is in group 3 it burns in air to form an oxide x2o3 write a simple equation for this reaction so we practice writing equations in chapter number 3 stoichiometry information is given in the question so element is x it is reacting with air and in air it would be reacting with oxygen oxygen exists in molecular form so i will be writing o2 and then it produced x2o3 balance this equation so first i would balance oxygen 2 cross 3 6 and 3 cross 2 will also be 6 2 into 2 the number of x on right side is 4 so multiply this x on left side by 4 first question has been completed move to the next question magnesium calcium and strontium are group 2 elements complete table to show the electronic configuration of calcium atom uh, this is element number 20 there are 20 electrons uh, we studied the electronic configuration of first 20 elements in chapter number 2 atoms elements and compounds out of these 22 electrons are in first shell then 8 in second 8 in third and last two electrons are in the fourth shell so this is complete electronic configuration for calcium atom uh, next question kaha gaya next question jiraha b part uh, describe how the electronic configuration of strontium atom is similar to electronic configuration of calcium atom we didn't study the electronic configuration of strontium atom but we can answer this question by using the information that was there in syllabus if you look at the periodic table you will come to know that both strontium and calcium belong to same group and in electronic configuration we studied if two elements are from the same group they have same number of outer 
shell electrons. You can also write there, with, uh, there would be two electrons in outer shell of both strontium as well as calcium because we know the configuration of calcium and there are two electrons in outer shell. The next part how uh, this electronic configuration is different from electronic configuration of calcium atom. Well, this can also be answered by using the information given in syllabus. Calcium and strontium are from different periods. And we know that uh, the number of occupied shells are different if two elements are belonging to different periods. So you can write different number of occupied shells. Why? Because calcium and strontium are in different periods and number of occupied shells equal to the number of period. This is we have already studied. Okay, next C part calcium reacts with cold water to form two products a colorless gas P which pops with lighted splint. Now, this is test for hydrogen gas. So you can write this is hydrogen and a weakly alkaline solution Q uh, was produced along with gas P which turns uh, milky when carbon dioxide uh, is bubbled through it. So basically uh, this is what we studied in uh, test for carbon dioxide uh, when you bubble carbon dioxide gas through calcium hydroxide it turns milky. So it means this uh, weakly alkaline solution Q is calcium hydroxide and identify the ion responsible for making solution Q alkaline. We know that hydroxide ion is responsible for making the solution alkaline. You can write the name of this hydroxide or you can uh, mention the formula for hydroxide ion because it is not mentioned in the question. You just have to identify. So you can write hydroxide or you may uh, show the formula. Suggest the pH of solution Q because it is alkaline so the pH should be above 7 and you can write any value between 7 and 12. Uh, why 12? Because this is a weakly alkaline. So if you write the value 13 or 14 it would be strongly alkaline. So let's say I am picking the value 10. Write a simple equation for reaction of calcium with water. So it is calcium. It is reacting with water. Uh, from the given information we know one of the product is hydrogen and this alkaline solution Q is calcium hydroxide. So these are the two products that are produced here. So let's balance this number of hydrogen atoms on right sides are 2 plus 2 4. I am multiplying H2O by 2. Hydrogen is balanced, oxygen is balanced. Now calcium was already balanced. Okay. D part magnesium reacts with chlorine to form magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride is an ionic compound. Okay, thank you very much. Complete the dot and cross diagram of ions in magnesium chloride. Show the charges on ions as well. Okay, so here is the dot and cross diagram. Uh, this is incomplete. You have to complete this. Magnesium is element number 12. So there are two, eight, two electrons in magnesium atom. We know it is from group number 2. It would be losing 2 electrons when it forms magnesium 2 plus ion. So configuration for magnesium ion is 2 and 8. The first shell is shown here. It has 2 electrons. Now I am drawing this second shell. So it would be having 8 electrons. 2, 2, 4 and 2, 6 and 2, 8. Now the configuration for magnesium ion is complete. The charge would be 2 positive. Now if you talk about chlorine atom. Uh, it is element number 17. So configuration for chlorine 17 is 2, 8 and 7 electrons in the last shell. Uh, but as it is forming ionic compound, it would be gaining 1 electron and total number of electrons would be 18 now. So 2, 8 and 8. Two shells are already shown there. You have to draw the uh, third shell where there will be 7 dots, 2, 2, 4, to 6 and 7 because these 7 electrons were already there in the chlorine and one electron has been imported from uh, magnesium. Similarly for this second uh, chloride ion you have to put 
seven dots these are the electrons of chlorine and one electron it is gaining from magnesium and the charge over both these chloride ions will be minus so in this way now this thought and cross diagram has been completed one physical property of ionic compound is that they are soluble in water give other two physical properties that are typical of ionic compounds so think yourself uh, you will come to know that ionic compounds have high melting points because there are strong electrostatic forces between the oppositely charged ions so one of the properties that we studied is that they have high melting points and second property is they conduct electricity when molten so ionic compounds conduct electricity when they are molten or when they are in solution form e part aqueous silver nitrate is added to magnesium chloride a white precipitate forms write an ionic equation for this reaction include state symbols so ionic equations are part of chapter number 3 in syllabus so first write all the species that are involved in this reaction silver nitrate is aqueous so ag plus is there no3 minus is there it is combining with aqueous magnesium chloride so magnesium plus 2 ion is there and chloride ion when they will be reacting a white precipitate forms and we know the white precipitate is due to insoluble silver chloride because two products are formed in this reaction one is silver chloride as it is precipitate so it would be solid and other product is magnesium nitrate we know all the nitrates are soluble so magnesium and nitrate ions are still in aqueous form because there is no change in magnesium and nitrate ions before and after the reaction they are called as spectator ions and they will be cancelled out when we will be writing the ionic equation so now you are left only with silver ion aqueous plus chloride ion aqueous and these will combine to give white precipitate of silver chloride and the state symbol is s means solid question number 2 is completed question 3 copper is a transition element it has variable oxidation states state two other chemical properties which make them different from group 1 elements so transition elements act as catalyst that is not a property of group 1 elements and also transition elements form colored compounds that is another chemical property that is observed in case of transition elements and it is not property of group 1 elements copper 2 oxide is heated at 800 degree centigrade it undergoes reaction shown by equation so here is the chemical equation identify the changes in oxidation numbers of copper and oxygen in this reaction and explain in terms of changes in oxidation numbers why this is a redox reaction so first change in oxidation number of copper from dash to dash so here is cuo oxidation number of copper in this is plus 2 how did we get this copper x plus oxidation number of oxygen is minus 2 that should be equal to 0 so from here x is equal to plus 2 copper is plus 2 in cuo and if you look at cu2o then 2x plus minus 2 equals 0 2x should be equal to 2 and x equals 2 upon 2 that is equal to plus 1 so here oxidation number of copper is plus 1 in case of cu2o Uh, now talk about oxygen so oxygen in cuo has oxidation number uh, minus 2 uh, in cu2o oxygen has oxidation number uh, minus 2 but in case of this o2 where oxygen is in uncombined form the oxidation number of oxygen is 0 so this oxygen has been changed from minus 2 to 0 so now uh, you have to explain why is this a redox reaction so decrease decrease in oxidation number is a reduction and that is happening in case of copper because it is changing its oxidation number from plus 2 to plus 1 and 
increase in oxidation number is oxidation and a reaction in which oxidation and reduction both are happening simultaneously is called a redox reaction so here oxygen is changing from uh, minus 2 to 0 while copper is changing from a plus 2 to plus 1 so copper is being uh, reduced here while oxygen is being oxidized calculate the volume of oxygen measured at room temperature and pressure which is formed when 1.60 gram of copper oxide reacts as shown in the equation now if you have to determine the volume of oxygen then you should be knowing the moles of oxygen and to calculate the moles first you have to calculate the moles of CuO copper 2 oxide the mass of copper 2 oxide is given so it is 1.60 divide this mass upon the MR value for CuO MR for copper oxide is 80 when you divide this value upon 80 you will be getting 0 0.02 mole this is for copper oxide and now use uh, this balanced chemical equation to determine the moles of oxygen the ratio for copper oxide to oxygen is 4 ratio 1 now if you have 0 0.02 moles of copper oxide then uh, the moles of oxygen would be 0 0.02 upon 4 why because the ratio is 4 to 1 and the answer that you will be getting is 0 0.005 moles now if there are 4 moles of copper oxide you will be getting 1 mole of oxygen and if there are 0 0.02 moles of copper oxide then 0 0.005 moles of oxygen gas would be produced here we have to calculate the volume and not the moles so to obtain the volume moles 0 0.005 can be multiplied by 24 that is volume for one mole of a gas and the final answer will be 0 0.12 decimeter cube uh, write it over here 0 0.12 and the unit is already given here copper metal is obtained when scrap iron is added to copper sulfate uh, the reaction between iron and aqueous copper sulfate is a displacement reaction state why this displacement reaction takes place mm, we studied in displacement reaction of metals in chapter number 9 that a metal can displace another metal from its aqueous solution only if it is present above in the reactivity series or if it is more reactive than the metal ion that is present in the solution so here if iron is displacing uh, copper from copper sulfate then it should be more reactive than copper and that is the answer to this iron is more reactive than copper that is the reason why this reaction is taking place write a simple equation for reaction between iron and aqueous copper to sulfate the symbol for iron is fe plus copper 2 sulfate is CuSO4 that is the chemical formula for copper 2 sulfate and when they are reacting we will get iron 2 sulfate FeSO4 and copper metal will get separated from the solution so this is the simple equation our displacement reaction is one method for obtaining a copper metal from aqueous copper 2 sulfate identify another method for obtaining copper metal from aqueous copper 2 sulfate yes there is another method that is electrolysis in which we use copper 2 sulfate as an electrolyte and then we pass electricity through it and copper metal gets deposited at cathode so the method for obtaining copper metal from copper sulfate is electrolysis that can be used question number three is completed here